We are supply chain. We are supply chain. We are supply chain. Nosotros somos supply chain. I am my supply chain group. I'm MSCG, and we're your supply chain group. Hello everyone, welcome back to SAP's presentation on IPP and PPDS. Before we get into the PPDS details, let us do a quick refresher on what we have accomplished up until now. To begin with, you saw Robin present sales and operations planning cycle using the SAP JAM collaboration tool. You saw Sandra talk about trade promotion plan and you saw how promotion planning is help and integration with demand planning facilitated. You saw supply planning in which there were functionalities like um, expiring batches that were demonstrated, network balancing, raw milk based composition planning, all that was demonstrated. We, so we talked strategic planning, tactical planning, operational supply planning, and now is the time to transition to day to day execution level planning. And that's where EPPDS comes into picture. We are talking about one single plan that transitions from the SNOP level onto the PPDS level. The integration engine is called, the integration engine is through IVP supply and response and PPDS in the, it, it will not be a part of this um, demonstration. We are going to consider that that integration happens and we are going to move forward. We are going to look how SAP facilitates the ease uh, of operations for, for, the, for the production planners and the schedulers in the system using web-based Fiori apps. <clears throat> we are going to see that the whole PPDS application itself is broken into planning and scheduling. Planning is where your demand supply matching happens, shelf life maturation date taken into consideration, any product attribute based planning that happens, replanning for milk based composition in the shorter term, three, four day horizon that happens. As a logical next step after planning is scheduling. Scheduling is where your finite schedule is kicked out your sequencing requirements is, are considered optimization of the plan. You know, any delays for the customers are eliminated. Inventory at the minimum is, is the goal uh, from an optimization perspective. You're going to see a very solid and robust uh, simulation planning tool capability within PPDS. Um, alerts and reporting are a part of the um, advanced planning tool in PPDS that comes along um, as, an integrated part, as an integrated package. Um, you will see then we will talk a little bit about the handoff to the shop floor from the production schedule that gets created in PPDS. Let's talk a little bit about what are the inputs, outputs, and how does optimization talk about, go about its business. Um, from starting with the left-hand side, you see the strategic plan, you know, um, comes down and, and how we take it into the execution phase. Uh, the inputs, milk gear composition, shelf life, um, any resource related cons constraints, um, short term demand changes for forecasts and sales orders, um, shelf life, we talked about that. And then the main thing is the constraint supply plan that comes in from, um, from, uh, from IVP response and supply. There are two buckets in which the process happens within PPDS. One is the planning, we talked about that a little bit, and the scheduling. The important thing to note in scheduling is there are two ways you can go about it. You know, optimizer can do it, everything automated, and then you have the ability to come on top of it and do any manual adjustments to top it off. Um, the, output ex the outputs expected from shelf life planning and the PPDS ex you know, optimizer is uh, is threefold. One, a, a a shelf life compliant, maturation compliant, demand supply plan. You've got a finitely optimized schedule that is shelf life compliant and uh, that takes into consideration the changeovers and a a schedule of work orders that can be handed over to the shop floors. Before we get into the demonstration, I'd like to you know take you through a few talking points as far as the slides are concerned. There, there, there will be three areas in which we are uh, going to do the demonstrations today. Shelf life planning, where we are going to look at maturation date and remaining shelf life. Um, finite schedule where we are going to look at the optimizer function and how that works. Uh, we will show you attributes based planning for cheese blocks and we will show you the cheese maturation box related functionality in the system. 
first thing shelf life planning there are two screen prints one on top one on bottom shredded cheese at the top sliced cheese at the bottom um, the the intention of showing you the one at the top is considering forecast as the demand element and how does the shelf life uh, compatibility works there within ppds you see there are a couple of boxes one on top one on the bottom one on the top um, is showing compliance blue arrow one on the shop one on the bottom shows non-compliance red arrow um, if you see the first forecast, 24th of August is the requirement. The available batch stock is 23rd of August. Compliance, all ensured, everything is good to go. The demand is uh, matched to the supply. Um, the next one is a non-compliance scenario. Forecast requirements, 5th of um, September, but the available stock because of the matur maturation date is not available till the 6th of September. So that's out of compliance. System recognizes that and creates a planned order to fulfill the forecast requirement. Um, come to the second screen print, we're talking sliced cheese. One product, two customers. Customer A having shelf life requirement of 100 days, shelf life, uh, customer B having shelf life requirement 30 days. Now, how does that play out in the system? Uh, again, we use the same principle, red arrow non-compliance, blue arrow compliance. If you see the first sales order 1144, customer A, 100 days minimum shelf life requirement. You start from the requirement date of the 30th, 100 days brings it to the 8th of January. Um, the available batch stock for it is expiring after the 8th of January, that is the 29th of April. So all good to go here. If you consider the next one, the sales order is 1171. This is a non-compliance scenario. Requirement date is 30th of October. Um, 30 days um, remaining shelf life requirement puts the batches not to expire before the 27th of um, November. But if you see the available batch stock, it expires the 17th of November. So that is um, 10 days before the actual expected date. So that's non-compliant. So the system recognizes that and it creates a planned order to cover that sales order demand. Um, and that's that's what you see reflected here. Another thing before I move out of the screen is this column called grade. What it is, is it's representative of uh, shredded cheese having grade 9001, for example, and um, a sliced cheese having a, having 9999 as the, uh, as the Grade. What the grade is representative of is shredded cheese having its own, sliced cheese having its own, but the po both of these requirements, you know, are made from the same component that is cheese block. I will jump into the system uh, to show you how that works. Now, if you relate back, I want, to, I want to take your attention to this column. 9999 is a planned order created to satisfy the demand coming from, um, is coming from sliced cheese. And 9001 is the demand, is, is created for demand um, for from, from shredded cheese, which is 9001. So if you look at it from a planning and a logical, logical perspective, what you've got is, um, cheese block making requirement specific to the grades of the finished products that you have. And that ties back to this. I was talking to you about the forecast requirement, how this requirement is on the 24th, stock available 23rd, so it is matching. On the other hand, this requirement is, if you see this requirement is on the 5th, but the available stock is on the 6th, so it is non-compliant. And then the system creates this planned order to meet um, that requirement. Uh, from a sales order perspective, you've got um, you've got sales order one, which is customer A, 100 days. Um, the minimum requirement uh, shelf life takes it to the 8th of January. Available stock 20, 29th of April, all good there. So the compatibility exists. The second sales order, um, minimum requirement shelf life 30 days. The batches should not expire before the 27th. Available batch expires the 20, 17th of November. And as a result, you have non compliance. And then the system you know, complements that by um, creating a planned order in order to meet that demand. What we're going to do next is dive into the um, optimization tool. That's where we will take it off from.